Hello everyone. Succession management is the topic of the day. Now, succession management is basically planning for the future. What we are planning for the growth of the organizations to be at the upper trajectory board and who is going to take the organization in the future course of So, it is all about pipeline. If you want to look into it, everything we it needs to be streamlined and apply pipeline. So it starts from self or the employees, then the bigger responsibilities of managing the other people. Then probably we give a functional responsibilities and situational responsibilities, static business unit, and thereafter you go for an organizational leadership. So what are the passages? There are three, pass uh, four passages that comes around it. This is a passage one. When you multiply from a good individual, good employee to be a good manager, then comes the passenger two, wherein from being a good manager, people take a liking for you. They see a leadership, a potential who can guide them, who can lead them. With this, we come to the third passage. From here, you pick up the trick of the traits and probably excel in a few of the verticals. That is what the functional managers would be all about it. Last but not the least is the transformation that comes in, in you and you take the helm of the organization to take it future course of action. So it is the four passages that one per pursues through from self to others, from to others to bigger bulk of people, from bigger bulk of people, the whole organization looking up as a most, most efficient person to uh, look after then the organization leadership pattern actually falls in your hand. I am just trying to give you the level of employees of a fictitious organization. Now, if you look into it, we have we start from the S3 level. Now, S3 level is an entry service for administrative, technical, and production jobs. So this is the basic level where people enter the most raw manpower that we are looking into it and then they get polished through experiences probably through qualification and you become a senior service administrative from senior service administrative you become a professional fellow who are good to go add for any anything that is pertaining to the organization or to that particular operation of that position. Therein, we are last but not the least moving into the supervisory level or the managerial level, which is intermediate, where you cool your heels or find your skills to become a senior professional or be, uh, be into the management job. Probably, in all probabilities, you now have not been decorated with the title, but you carry on the jobs of a manager at this position. And if the potential is good and if the exposure is good enough, you are promoted into a senior management. This is where the real action begins out here. From senior management to group um, VP, vice president or state vice president or corporate vice president. So then become senior executive of group, corporate vice president, special vice president, group chief executives. And last but not the least, you are actually manning the global top executive at this point, which is E0. So look at it. The path of an employee changes from this direction altogether and we improve upon it. Try I am trying to give you a bench strength mapping altogether for you. I call it P2. Why P2? Because we have potential out here and performance out here. Now, if we can categorize into low, high and medium potential, similarly, low, medium and high performances, if we can marry those uh, every cube cubicles and you will find that there are four cubicles. And if you look into it, person with low potential and low potential, remember this low is equal to this low, right? So this is low potential and low performances. It is a question mark out here. You have to understand what is going wrong and what is not going wrong. Similarly, potential might be good. The skill might be good, but the will is poor. Again, a question mark comes out here as an inconsequential pair player. Potential is high, but probably your performance is low. Why? Because you're too new to the organization. 
So probably you give a question mark and I am not slotting it in the red color box if you look into it. So what happens when the potential is medium, uh, uh, sorry, when the potential is low but performance is medium. So that means the employee is actually working in working into the things of the uh, things of the organization. He is learning the trade with every passage, uh, passage of the time. So there is a continuity player if you look into it. So we are not going to hive this employee at all. This is a person to be cherished with. Similarly, if the potential is medium and the performance is medium, so you are at parity, you, the employee is not putting enough amount of effort, but he or she is doing at par with the job. So the solid performer is a rock solid performer, is the dependable gentleman or lady in concern. But then what happened? The potential is definitely high, but the performance is medium. Probably there's a lack of confidence out here. You need to put up a question mark because there might be a lack of confidence, there might be a lack of will or he is too new into the job and things so on, so on and so forth. So what is happening? We come to the next cubicle which is potential being low and performance is high. It's a pro in a position in that particular profile, in that particular position, in that particular job, he or she excels. So basically, despite potential being low, he has applied, the employees applied and he has gained the confidence. So this is a star performer out here, a professional completely. And remember when the potential is medium, but the performance is high. So definitely he or she is enjoying himself, one, or applying himself to the fullest frame. But who is the best person of the lot? If you look at it, is the potential is high and definitely performance is high. So this is my consistent star. So why do we have marked it with the blue colors, this box? This box is an average maintenance fellow. Probably things can go up anytime or may go down also. But these green boxes are people to be cherished for. Probably you got to hang in around. Moving to the next slide, if you look into the development grade, you will find that we have when the potential being higher, uh, potential being lower and performance being higher, we, have, we categorize them as the C player, which means providing feedback to the participant, encouraging self-directed growth and development, provide coach, help to help achieve better results, Identif identify smaller role in assignment, or special projects at a current level. So basically you are nurturing them. People are applying themselves despite the low potential, but they are applying themselves. The performance is very high. But what happened when the potential is low, but the performance is mediocre. So people are providing feedback to them, to the participant. Tell them what they can do to achieve better results. Probably identify or enhance or enrich their role with the passage of time with a small, small increment in their, in their job profile and from a current level and encourage participant to find a mentor, something which has to be done since he or she is applying himself despite being a low potential. The performance is up to the mark, just about up to the mark. There, can, there might be scheme of growth. There might be gap that can be filled upon. But what? If performance and potential is both low. Now this is where it is up to the participants for self-directed growth and development. The company might not be interested in taking a board, uh, doing a hand-holding for them. Provide opportunities, definitely provide opportunities. Be patient with them. Now what happens when the potential is medium and the performance is low? Again a B category player, you have to tell them, encourage them mentor them and probably expose them to a better stringent uh, atmosphere exposure so that they can come out they can blossom the, from themselves from their shell so expose them in a seminar workshop provide opportunities keep them motivated what happened when the potential is uh, high and probably Probably the performance is low. Now this is where you need to go around it and probably look into them as to what is going right. Probably are they too new or too late, which needs to be understood. Next is 
where I am trying to map my bench strength. Did I say in my previous slide what I'm going to do around it with the red blocks? I'm going to try to remove or probably reappointment or redesign the cross. On with the blue line, it is all about lateral growth or mastery, keeping faith in them, continuing with them. And with the green boxes, it's all about upward growth, rewarding them, simple and straight, rewarding them. Except for this box, which I am still in question because it's a benefit of doubt that has been given to it. So you will find it's not been pointed in red where the performance is low, but definitely the potential is very high. Probably the pedigree from where the education has been got is. So what, how do we go uh, against it? So we have discussed all together, right? So in low, in terms of performance being low and potential being low. So performance is low on the y-axis and potential is low on the x-axis. We have a C category player is a poor performer. Performance being uh, medium and potential is low is a problem child. Similarly, performance is uh, high but potential is low. Probably a loose cannon altogether, so properly give them uh, right kind of motivation. So what happens when the uh, performance is medium and potential is low? So it's a slow poke probably. And similarly, potential is low, but performance is high. It's a player cash cows and we got to walk around it. So these are things that needs to go around it. Solid citizens is a person with medium potentials and high performances so that is what needs to be taken care of it it's a solid citizen wherein a person who is both medium in potential and a performance is an average performers similarly a performer who is very high but medium in potential would be something where you got to go around the star potential person now this particular slide i have given it for you to understand if you want to map it to your uh, with your colleagues with your workmates and you have to rate them where do you want to rate them in which of the corners is it this corner are you rating them in this corner which is a star performer so that needs to be taken uh, taken in question or this is somewhere than the uh, negative fellow that goes around it or outside the box that you're looking at it so what we are doing it, we are saying this is a role that we are pl planning. This is a job description and we have the business strategy, the competency, the success profile, integrated talent management that comes around it from the data set that comes about. Competency mapping that has been taken around it. How do we go for the talent review or performance appraisal? It is all about assessment and the 360 degree view viewpoint. So based upon it, we come and probably take what exactly needs to be done as far as succession concern. So measures in terms of succession planning is monitor those pipeline gaps. How do we go around it? This is churn analysis. So churn analysis says how many people are leaving the organization, how many people are joining the organization. If people leaving the organization is more than the people joining the organization, things are not going in the right direction. If people are not staying with the job, sticking with the company, again, things are not going the right, right direction. Then comes the readiness analysis, uh, analysis. What is the readiness analysis? In case there are departure, maybe vital position have been vacated or a mass departure. Is the company ready to take the uh, problem head on? That is what the readiness analysis would be all about. It. Are there right talent working in the company who can man the, uh, man the show? Performance and potential matrix, which I've already told you as far as those green blocks, the red blocks, and most importantly, the blue box that we are looking into it. So people with the green blocks, if you uh, plot them out there, please nurture them. If people who are in the blue box, please motivate them. And people who are in the red box need to warn them and probably get from them onwards. So what is the troubling leadership of transition statistics? Number one, you know, 46% usually literature shows 46% of departures are mostly unplanned. Suddenly you get some opportunities which is new and probably unexpected and the executive depart, leaves the organization. So you don't have a time to react. 50 of the baby boomers, 50% of the baby boomers are going to reach their retirement or probably at the fag end of the career. They are going to retire within the next five years or at the very fag end of the career. How do you remove those kind of uh, gaps, those kind of experience gaps? 
51% of the companies do not have succession plan in place. This needs to be addressed and only 6% of the companies have a system in place to build top flight executive. Probably they nurture and they have planned things around it. So this is what the troubling leadership is all about it. Talking about succession management, why is it important? Please remember, uh, the faulty integration of senior executive can cost approximately 10 to 20 times the salary of executive in terms of opportunity cost. Remember that 64% of the outside executive actually fail. That is, out of every three uh, executive that you hire from outside, two are bound to fail and most importantly 40% of them fail within the first year. So failing in leadership transition can be deadly and detrimental to the organization. Management succession thus is one of the most critical strategic risks in a corporate that a corporate. Effective succession planning. How do we go about it? Assure that the leadership continuity plans are in place for all the key positions for every position in the organization they were providing a managed change to the organization leadership so people basically the organization is becoming shockproof if you have got the ready-made succession, succession plan in place it is very easy to absorb those shocks allows executive leadership to take discerning look at the leadership requirement and capabilities both now and into the future and build plans of transition career development fill gaps of consequences thereof Please understand, you should be always, the organization should be always be five years ahead in terms of planning. So, model for effective succession planning. If you look into the models for effective succession planning, this is the core concept. You know, the top management needs to plan everything out here very meticulously. They have to look for the succession map, the gaps, what is happening, who is going to leave, or who is vital, continuity, and so on and so forth. We can get it from the process input and process analysis. You need to understand input is the context, the strategy, the organization scan, the future shifts. Probably when we shall talk of future shift, it can be a technological shift. It can be a geographical shift. It can be a modus operandi shift altogether. Who are the people who are required, the leadership requirement, the uh, player map, the capacity or potential assessment that we go around it. These, these two, the process analysis and the process input, believe me, has to be matched with critical detail. Critical detail like value of leadership at risk. So which is the most vital position that goes around it. Mind you, there can be a employee who not only leaves the organization, perhaps goes into, a, uh, pro perhaps expires suddenly of, for whatever reasons that you might think of her. For that, the organization should always plan and should not suffer at the demise of a valuable employee. Incumbent restraint, succession matches, succession mismatches. This is a very black spot if, if an organization hires a person who is absolutely wrong for that, wrong fit for that role. Block potential, organization at risk. So we have high leaders, high potential, core capacities, capabilities, and uh, relevant incumbent with this we come to the success management plan and continuity plan time so foremost thing create a roadmap for executive succession and leadership always motivate the fellow that what are what is there in the pipeline please remember if you can inform your employees about what is there in their uh, pipeline they will not only look at the rewards but they will also look at the prospect that the company is thinking or envisioning for themselves. Guys, development activities of the key executive serves to anticipate, manage issues of responsibilities, readiness and career ambition. Avoid transition problem and premature pro uh, promotion. This is very true. Do not. Any premature promotion can be detrimental. It need not be reward for rewarding experience at all. So provide the pipeline. Let, let promotions be there, but only when the employees have matured to occupy that role of responsibility and discharge the duty. Provide the pipeline of leadership capability necessary to deliver the challenges. Now, what are they? Key component requirement now and into the future. 
taking account of the likely shift that the organization is going to make in terms of architecture, in terms of structure, in terms of processes, in terms of strategies, potential successor or lack of it to each key position. Remember, each key position together with the development needs, gap assessment and timeline. Next move, readiness assessment so that opportunity can be identified, departures anticipated. So actionable plan to prepare current leaders and high potential for continuing performance improvement, capability development and future career opportunities. So we come to the fag end of the presentation where we need to understand the succession matches. Now, this is the duties and the responsibilities with the abilities of the leaders, leaders, the leaders readiness is also should coincide, coincide with the timing of the successor readiness. So this is what is very vital. Then come incumbent restraint situation where leader is ready to take a new responsibility. But probably there are no succession out, out there. there. There are no manpower inside uh, and the company has not seen into, uh, has not been a very foresightable in such a situation. So incumbent restraint please avoid succession mismatches situation where the leader is ready for new responsibility but probably the successor is not ready probably there is no successor in that event how do you go around it the leader says okay fine i'm going to hang my boots but who's going to take the position people are hesitating blocked potential situation where leaders is ready for new responsibility but the incumbent in the next level position is either not ready or probably will not be there in another thousand days, two years to three years time. Valued leader at risk situation where more than one successor is identified. The unsuccessor, can, unsuccessful candidate will be at risk of leaving since wonderful or curated alternatives may not have been found for him or her. So you need to understand when you are grieving more than one successor for a particular position, one person might be promoted, but what will happen to the other fellow who has who has been just been unsuccessful? Definitely demotivation will creep in. Definitely he or she would think of doing more harm to the company rather than or probably leaving the company. So that needs to be understood. Organization at a risk, situation where no successor is present. Corrective action is either a priority or simply judicious, something very straightforward. Now, we come to the last segment, it's tangible result. Put in place strategies and plan for leadership continuation and succession. Very true. So, have a roadmap. Define personalities and leadership development priorities and investments. So, invest in your employees. Tell them, coach them, mentor them, reward them and, and be very frank as well as the future is concerned of the organization and, them, uh, and the employees. Motivate leadership performance and some ret uh, retention. How do you motivate them? Ask them to attend seminars. How? Ask them to attend workshop. Ask them to give some. They can pick certain skills, leadership skills from any of the any of the paid program that is available. Anticipate a smooth leadership transition. Mitigate the risk of leadership discontinuity. So you need to understand a person might be there, might not be there, but the role will be filled either by one or the other employee. So the, the role will never go empty and customer will never feel the lack of any uh, discrepancies as far as product or services are concerned. Build ongoing leadership and enterprise capability. Strengthen stakeholder confidence. With this, I come to an end of this presentation.